Good morning, Shorter College. Shorter College and friends, good morning on this cold, wintry morning. I trust that everyone is doing well and tucked in well at home and being warm. And we are glad that we are able to continue on with our chapel on virtual format today. And we are exceptionally pleased to have as our special guest today, uh, persons from the Arkansas Rehabilitation Services. And the chaplain's department is, in, is the department that is sponsoring chapel today. And our special guest is the Arkansas Rehab Services. So I um, want to just invite you all to, um, as the speakers speak, if you have questions, please jot them down because we will have a question and answer session um, afterwards. And at this time, uh, our agenda for today is we're going to have Mr. Timothy Baker, our SGA president. He will lead us in prayer after which we will have our scripture reading by Ms. Uh, Leticia Connors. And then we will have a musical selection that's been prepared for us by video by Reverend Henry Parker, and then we'll come back and I will lead us in our statement of faith. At this time, uh, Mr. Baker, will you lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing us to come together, uh, even though it's virtually, and to celebrate your grace and glory. Keep providing watch over us and keep guiding us, students, faculty, and staff, as we enter some of us our final semesters, some continuing their legacy and journey here is shorter. Just keep watching us, guiding us, and giving you your love and support. And in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And now our scripture by Ms. Connor. Um, today's scripture comes from 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And it reads, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him, all might believe. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we'll have our musical selection now. All right, that's right. We'll do our statement of faith. And so, Shorter College, is an African Methodist Episcopal Church sponsored school and it is shaped by the Methodist tradition and understanding of sin, grace, and the possibility of full salvation for Christ-like living. Shorter College embraces the equality, dignity, and worth of all persons and endeavors to be a campus community that reflects both the unity and diversity of the body of Christ. We believe that there is but one living and true God, everlasting, without body or parts, of infinite power, wisdom, and goodness, the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. In the unity of this Godhead, there are three persons of one substance, power, and eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who is the word of the Father, that very and eternal God of one substance with the Father, took man's nature in the womb of the blessed virgin, so that the two whole and perfect natures, that is to say the Godhead and manhood, were joined together in one person, never to be divided. Whereof is one Christ, very God and very man, who truly suffered, was crucified, dead and buried to reconcile his father to us and to be sacrificed, not only for original guilt, but also for the actual sins of men. We believe that Christ did truly rise from the dead and took again his body with all things appertaining to the perfection of man's nature, wherewith he ascended into heaven 
and there sitteth until he returns to judge all men at the last day. We believe in the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son is of one substance, majesty and glory, but the Father and the Son, very and eternal God. We believe that the Holy Scriptures contain all things necessary to salvation and that the Bible is the inspired word, infallible and authoritative word of God. And that is what we believe. All right, thank you. That was provided to us by Reverend Parker, uh, the, our choral director. We know that uh, we've entered over into, we've entered over into Black History Month and um, we know that we're going to be able to look forward to having some really rich music presented to us over this next month. Um, our announcements for today, the Arkansas Department of Finance has part-time in paid internship positions available for students and recent graduates. If you are interested, uh, please see Mrs. Kelly Husky at extension 227 or see myself at extension 215 for more information, give us a call. Also, uh, you are being invited to participate as the Shorter College Choral invites you to join them as they represent Shorter College in the HBCU Black History Month worship at Second Baptist Church on Sunday, February 12th at 10 a.m. The address to Second Baptist Church is 1709 John Barrow Road in Little Rock, Arkansas. We ask that you would please come out and support our choir. The other three HBCUs, local HBCUs will also be there. So I know it's gonna be a great time. And then my final announcement that I have to bring to you is that uh, February is HBCU Walking Billboard Month. And what that means to us is all of the colleges, all of the HBCUs, have a day in February where we're asked to wear and promote our school. So our day at Shorter is Friday, this coming Friday, February the 3rd. And we're asking that you wear your Shorter College swag and your gear. If you have sorority or fraternity wear, you can also wear that. But Mr. Kane, our communications person, he is going to be walking the campus and he will be taking um, videos of us in our respective locations and we want to show real bulldog pride. So we're asking that on Friday, everyone would step out with your shorter wear on. I believe that brings us to the end of our announcements. Of course, watch your cell phones uh, as we go through this inclement weather watch your uh, student emails and uh, watch your for text messages as we hear from our leadership in um, what is our next step as this inclement weather um, comes in on us. So our guest today, our guest today is the Arkansas Rehabilitation Services. We have some of their finest employees that are here to share with us today. And that being in the person of Ms. Clara Taylor. She is the business engagement representative and she has been with Arkansas Rehab Services for 12 years, but she has been with the state of Arkansas for 32 years. Uh, she says, I worked for the Arkansas Department of Health and Department of Human Services before accepting a job with Arkansas Rehab Services. And she said that she assists clients and businesses. Her role is to assist clients with locating businesses that are hiring. Let me say that again. Her role is to assist clients 
with locating businesses that are hiring, also in resume writing, interview techniques and resources to any employment barriers. Um, I, she said, I meet regularly with businesses and assist them with ready and capable employees, resources and job fairs. And she enjoys helping and learning about people, businesses and resources that Arkansas has to offer to improve the lives of Arkansans. And also with her, along with her, we will have um, we will have Ms. Cassandra Adams. Ms. Cassandra Adams is a rehabilitation counselor. She's been with Arkansas Rehab Services for one year, and she assists clients with preparing for a career through assisting with financing, education, resources, and barriers to employment. Uh, she spent six years as a community job development coordinator for a nonprofit organization, and she enjoyed working with individuals to assist them in preparing for and achieving their educational, vocational, and independent living goals. We also have Mr. Watley, Mr. Whitley, I'm sorry. Mr. Whitley, he is the administrative assistant for Ms. Cassandra Adams, and he's been with Arkansas Rehabilitation Services for over three years. And he said, uh, I am normally the first person you talk to before you meet with the counselor. And he assists in reviewing clients' applications for services, recording intake information into the database and updating education information. And he enjoyed assisting the counselors with helping our clients achieve their career goals. So we have just have the whole gambit here with us today, and they will be able to uh, answer any questions that you may have about Arkansas Rehabilitation Services. And so now we will have, I believe, another musical selection, and then we will hear from our keynote speaker, Miss Clara Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Clara Taylor uh, with Arkansas Rehab Service. And as Ms. Hull Lovett already um, told you, with me is Cassandra Adams. And Ms. Hull Lovett, I'm like you, Capricornus. Uh, that name, he allows us to call him Cap. So make it easy for us. So uh, with That's us right. is Cap Whitley. And uh, I definitely appreciate the invitation. Uh, any opportunity that we can get out and talk about um, uh, Arkansas Rehab Services. You may hear me uh, refer to us as ARS. That's what we say a lot in the office. Uh, but we, we are Arkansas Rehabilitation Services. And that rehabilitation is vocational rehabilitation. Um, what we do here is some great work. Uh, I call us the best hidden state agency in, uh, in, in the uh, business here. And we have to get out and promote people to come and visit us and learn about what we do. Uh, our mission statement is the first thing I want you all to know about us is that we help prepare our Kansans with disability to work and lead a productive, independent life. When we say disability, um, uh, let me go to the next slide, which is about who we are. We are a Department of uh, Commerce on the Division of Workforce Services. Uh, our programs include uh, program planning, field services, our Arkansas Career Development Center, access and accommodations, and business service. Those are the programs that are under uh, Commerce. Uh, next slide. Uh, ARS provide opportunities for our Kansans with disability to lead productive and independent lives. Next slide. Uh, what can we provide? We have a lot of things that we can provide, but this is just a few. Trans transitional service for students finishing high school. Um, we start to look for students at 12th grade. 
they can start beginning at the end of their 11th grade going into 12th grade. If you all know of any students that have a mild to severe disabilities, ask them to get in contact with their counselors. We're in almost every school in Arkansas. They should know about us. If they don't, we would love to go out and talk to them about us and what we do. Because before they leave high school, we want them to know about Arkansas Rehabilitation Services. Um, we service for those with special communication needs, such as the deaf and hard of hearing. Um, we have uh, we have uh, staff. We have a department hold a um, section uh, for the clients that we have that are deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, anyone after they become an adult and want to still become a client of Arkansas Rehab and they want to go into the workforce, we have a lot of uh, ways that we can help accommodate them in different in various. Um, occupations that they would want to be in. So um, that's a good time to ask them to come in and see us and see what we have to offer. Vocational training. We are connected with just about every vocational school uh, in Arkansas. They know about us and we will love for our clients that don't want to go to a four-year college, uh, two-year college, just want to go into a training. We will love help uh, to help assist them with that opportunity. Uh, specialized services through private vendors. Uh, my job is to help our clients prepare and get ready for employment, but we do have vendors out there that are capable and able to go in with some of our clients who need that additional help, and they need someone by their side. We call them a job coach. Uh, we do have vendors out there that are able to go with our clients and walk them through uh, the process. Uh, our next slide. Uh, here are some of the different services, the tools and equipment. Uh, I always like to tell everybody the tools and equipment that Arkansas Rehab have, and that's under our ICANN program, is great. It's not just for the clients uh, going back to work. It's for any Arkansan. Um, I used them before I even knew who they were. Uh, my mother had a hearing uh, problem uh, that she developed over time. And so when the phone would ring, Sometimes she would hear it and sometimes she would not hear it. I was introduced to ICANN. Um, I was told to go over there and check the service out and see what they have to offer. So now if the phone ring, and I hope it don't ring while I'm talking, uh, it rings so loud that my neighbors probably can hear it. So she has no reason to say she can't hear the phone. Uh, the numbers on it are pretty big that she does not need her readers to uh, dial those numbers. Um, so that was one of the services. The other service that uh, I have um, been able to personally use what I can is that I have a brother that is hard of hearing. And so he currently has the doorbell uh, that you push and the blinking lights come on, uh, all type of te techniques over there. And the last thing that I have used I can for was my, um, unfortunately, my mom is now bedridden. And so we needed a Hoyer lifter to lift her out of the bed to a chair um, because she's, you know, a good 180 pounds. So you can't do that physically uh, by yourself. So I was able to uh, connect with I can and they were uh, and they um, allowed us to have a Hoyer lifter to lift her to and from. So that made life really easy for us. So if you know anybody, um, that has a disability, develop a disability, I can is definitely one of the places you would like to send them. Connect them with us and we would definitely connect you uh, with I can. Uh, you see RIDAC, we call it Right Act. Right Act is where uh, when clients come to us and they're asking about going to college, um, what we want to do before we help pay for college, we want to make sure that they're capable. Everything we do with uh, ARS, we want them to become successful. They've already faced some barriers, maybe already had some doors closed in their face. So our goal is to help them stay on the track of success. So Right Act, if they tell us they want to go to college, Right Act, it's not a, uh, it's just an assessment to see how well you learn and possibly how well you would do in college. We know that every test does not pinpoint your abilities and skills. But this is just to start to kind of let you know where you may be struggling and things that you may need to work on. Uh, okay. Uh, and um, 
Miss uh, uh, Cap and uh, Cassandra, if you all want to unmute yourself so you can jump in at any time. Um, job placement is what I can talk a lot about because that's actually what I do uh, is job placement. Uh, before you can get to me, let's just kind of go through the process. Before you can get to me, uh, you come in, you fill out what we call an application. It's really not an application. We call it a data sheet. You give us some information about you. Uh, everyone loves to say, I don't have a disability. If you live long enough, you would develop something, whether it's bad knees, uh, your arms, some arthritis, we pray that you don't develop that. But in case you do, we want to let you know that there is an agency out here that can help you through that. So you don't have to get discouraged. You don't have to quit your job. You just have to find the right people that is supporting what is going on with you right now. And that's just what our job is. So when you say you don't have a disability, well, if you're driving a 18 wheeler and you're getting in and out of that truck every day for the last 10, 15, 20 years, over a period of time, those knees are gonna give out. You're gonna need a new career. Well, Arkansas Rehab Services is that place where you would need to go and say, hey, I've been driving a truck for 18 years. That's all I know to do. I want to do something else. Um, we're that agency um, that will help you uh, see what else it is that you can do that you can stay gainfully employed. Let me put one uh, clause in there. Everything that we do um, pertaining to the rehabilitation service side is to help you stay employed or get employed. Things that happen with uh, some of the other entities that are under us, you do not have to be employed to receive those services. But to receive our services, you have to be interested in being and looking for a job. Uh, and education to obtain a job. But the goal is that you find a career that you're that you that makes uh, that you'll be making uh, substantial living that you can live an independent life and hopefully you'll be proud of the accomplishment that you have. Um, let's go to the next slide. So uh, field services we are in every state. Uh, in order to get to Arkansas Rehab Services, you will want to connect with the field office in your county. Uh, we are in the North Little Rock office. We do have a Little Rock office. We have a Searcy office. We have Conway office. We have Russellville, West Memphis, Texarkana, um, Fayetteville. There's probably not a county that we're not connected to. We connected to all 75 counties. So you would need to start with the uh, Arkansas Rehabilitation Services that is closest to your home. And uh, the, um, we'll provide vocational training. Again, we already said that, that you have to uh, have an, a disability. Um, you can either be born with it or you developed it over time. Next slide. Uh, here's, um, we do have the uh, phone numbers. If you can't see that and you wanna know how to connect with the one closest to your home, please give us a call and uh, we'll be more than happy to give you your county uh, phone number, their address, and um, give you any more information you need about the services. Uh, that's just a map to show you everywhere that we are connected. Next slide. Uh, it says, when can you apply for our services? Uh, age of 16 through 99. Again, 16 through 99, but you do have to be considering employment. Employment cannot be off the table for you. Everything that we do is to help you find employment. When a disability transfer uh, interferes with the ability to perform their current job duties, just as I was giving the example of the truck driver, um, when you can no longer climb in a truck, your knees are bad. Uh, you need something else to do. That's when you connect with us. Uh, connect with us, and then we will help you um, find the next career that will still produce money where you can continue to take care of yourself. Uh, when, the, uh, when the disability interferes with the ability to learn or train for a skill, that's when we talk, I talked earlier about a job coach. That's when you would look forward to, we have vendors um, that can help you. Uh, we have uh, yeah. other businesses that we connect with. Um, 
that we can connect with to help a person that's severely severely disabled, that we can help them find uh, employment, find skills. Okay, next one. Cassandra, did you want to say something about that? No. Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, when, when a disability, uh, we talked about that. Uh, let's go to the next, Scott. And you, uh, one of the things that I did mention is that you do have to be a legal uh, resident of uh, United States. Uh, here's how to reach us. Um, sure. Set up an appointment. Uh, you'll interview with the counselor. Uh, as we uh, told you earlier, uh, CAP is probably one of the first people uh, that you would see he would possibly give you your data sheet. Uh, help you complete it if you're not able to answer uh, any questions that you have about the data sheet. Um, set your appointment up with a counselor. And once you meet with the counselor, uh, you all would go over, um, go to the next slide, please. You will go over what you're interested in, um, complete the application uh, with the assigned counselor. Um, CAP would probably be the person to uh, assign you to a counselor. Next slide. A um, few things that you will need when you uh, sign up and possibly this is the same thing you would need anywhere you go applying for a job, uh, social security cards, your driver's license, uh, but to sign up with us, uh, we would like to know how do, how do you know you have a disability? <clears throat> Uh, were you just told that verbally? Uh, do you have it medically written? Because we would like to have that information written um, from a doctor uh, that says what your disability is. And I know when we talk about disability, when I heard the word disability, I look for someone to be in the wheelchair, someone to be blind, someone to be deaf. Um, but that's just a small portion of the people that we see. Uh, most of our clients have disabilities, uh, maybe migraines, maybe depression, maybe ADHD, um, maybe uncontrollable diabetes. So there are a list of things. So we don't want you to say, uh, I don't qualify because you possibly do qualify. So we just ask that whatever information that you have, whatever medication that you're taking um, that, have, that helps you sustain life, um, bring that and let us help you determine if you qualify um, for, our, um, for our program. Uh, next slide. Our eligibility will be will be determined within 60 days. So once you complete the assessment, you don't really have to call us and say, hey, um, I filled out an application yesterday. Uh, I haven't heard from anybody. It does help. Uh, I mean, we have your information. Um, sometimes, certain times of the year, we are extremely busy, especially during the time when it's school. Um, normally, um, during the month of August, we're extremely busy. We have a lot of clients that are going back to school. Um, they're trying to get uh, their information into us. They're trying to give us an update on their grades. And then again, in January, it's extremely busy. So uh, the best time um, to uh, sign up with this, uh, any time is a good time, but the best time where you will get a quicker response will probably be before school or colleges are getting ready to start. And you can get a response back pretty quickly at that time. Uh, we ask that you don't wait till the last minute to get started because um, there's a lot of things that have to be approved. As we said, if you're asking to go to college, uh, we may have to have you have a right act assessment so that we can make sure that you're capable of learning and we need to know your learning style when you get ready to go to college. So we want to make sure, again, that you're successful and that we are being a good steward of um, what, what you need and then what we need to do to help you be successful. Next slide. Uh, eligibility determination. Um, I'll leave that up there for you to glance at. Again, I don't want you to just look at that and say, I don't qualify because we can't put everything on paper. 
to tell you that you do qualify. So it's just best that you complete the data sheet, come in and talk to a counselor, and that way we can see if you qualify. SSI and SSDI, yes, that's an automatic qualification, uh, but there are other ways that you can qualify without being on SSI and SSDI. Next slide. Uh, the council will notify you normally by mail, um, and your responsibility is to contact your counselor and please keep your appointment. Uh, as I said, sometimes of the year we're extremely busy, so if you miss your appointment on Monday, uh, you coming on Tuesday is probably not likely. Um, so we just ask that once you set an appointment that you do your very best to keep your appointment. Next slide. Uh, income requirements. Um, I'm going to leave that up there for you to glance at again. Uh, don't let that scare you off because there are certain things um, that even with that income of one person that can be considered uh, when you talk about everyday life, medical bills, mm -hmm. and a lot of things, there's a lot of things that we can consider mm -hmm. that you that could make you eligible, even though you look up there and you see your income says, I'm not going to make it please come in and have a conversation with us. Did you have something to say, Cassandra? I was gonna say, because that also depends on the cost of the school you're going to and that sort of thing factors in. So you may not get the max amount, but you most people will get some sort of financial mm -hmm. assistance with school. Okay, next slide. IPE, Individual Plan of Employment. Um, that is very important. Um, when you come to ARS, a lot of people come and they want us to tell them what job or what career they need to go to. I believe that a person should participate and should know, have an idea of what they want to do. What are you good at? What would you like to do? What would you try to do? Um, coming in with your mind, with a mindset of knowing what you want to do uh, is, is very helpful. Um, the counselor will work with you in trying to find that, but she's not going to pinpoint and say, you need to be a construction worker. You need to be a hairdresser. Uh, she will help you with ideas based on, uh, based on your needs and based on the skills you have, based on the skills you're trying to obtain. Um, she would help you develop an individual plan for employment. Uh, do Once you um, set this plan, is it set in goal? It's not. Uh, especially depending on if you're coming straight out of high school. We don't expect you to say, hey, I'm going to be a lawyer. And then the next year or in school or the second year, uh, you stick to that. We would hope you would, um, but we know it doesn't always work that way. Uh, but having some idea, maybe coming in and talking to a counselor would help you determine what it is you would like to do. Next slide. Uh, when we talk about a vendor for uh, placement services, um, um, again, I am a, a business engagement representative, uh, short-term um, job placement specialist. So what we do, again, once you met with your counselor, you all have an individual plan for employment. Uh, and you decide whether you're going to go straight to work, you're going to a vocational school, you're going to a two-year college, four-year college. When you finish, there's a job out there for the skill that you have. My job is to help you find that job. No, I don't place you in the job. I help you find the job uh, because you got to have some buy-in. Um, the only people that are placed in jobs would be our clients that are severely uh, disabled. And so we up there, you see vendor for placement service. Sometimes um, our clients may have to have a job coach and that's someone to give them some an additional training, walk them through the process. Maybe they're more visual uh, learners and they're more action learners. So that's what a job coach do. They go through and they help them through each step of that. Um, that's only a small percentage of our clients who actually have to have a job coach, but we don't do it ourselves. That is a, a process and that is one of the uh, benefits of being an ARS client. Uh, we do have vendors that will help you with that process. Uh, the counselor, uh, you could, you may have a vendor in mind. You may say, hey, I, I met Jim and he works at Blue Cross Blue Shield Company. I'm making this up, of course. 
And I would like for him to be help me uh, help be my job coach. Um, if you don't know anybody, the counsel the counselor will make a referral. And um, if she makes, uh, she'll make a referral to someone to help you out. And um, you'll go from there. So you can either come in with the person in mind and we can see if we already have them listed as a vendor or the counselor can make a referral uh, to a vendor that we already have listed. But you do get to participate in every step of the process. Yeah, Your participation I is much needed. I just wanted to correct one thing. I do make a referral, but you still choose that vendor. I, I can give like a list of the vendors and then the client will choose because I'm not, I don't, you know, recommend one over the other. You know, I have to remain impartial. So, I mean, I can give you a list and you can talk to each of these, you know, list of vendors and see which one fits uh, your needs the best. And then we'll refer you to that vendor. Okay. Um, uh, and the vendors assist with job search, activity, employment, and employ until employment is obtained. Um, I would think that I'm great at that too, but we have we also have some great vendors out there uh, who are also uh, well educated, um, well developed in their communities that can really and have some great businesses that are willing and waiting for them for you to uh, come and uh, be one of their employees. Next one. Okay. Um, we've talked about uh, coming in. And again, this is talking about the, um, the service based on income. When we talk about based on income, please don't let that scare you off. Come in because there are some things that um, we will consider um, that takes away from your income. So don't make the determination on your own. Come in and talk to the counselor and see if there are some things that, um, that you have or that's going on with you that could be considered um, that you will qualify. Uh, just looking at the amount, I know a lot of people will just not show up, but please show up and let the counselor help you make that decision. That's why we have Cassandra on the line. Okay, next one. Um, this is a, uh, the best part, and this is what we call the most successful part. Uh, once you come into our agency, I'm just going to do a quick recap. Once you complete the application, once you and your counselor sit down and you find an individual plan of employment, once you find the employment and you have been at that particular job for 90 days and it's going good, you like the job, you can see yourself being there. We consider that to be a success. And I know some people look and say 90 days, that's not a long time. Well, it is. When you've had a disability, doors have been closed, um, you had a lot of barriers to employment, 90 days is a long time. So once you finish 90 days, uh, we will consider your case to be a success and we will close your case it's not for you to never reopen it again if something happened after the 90 days, but at least we're saying that you have managed to make it to 90 days, which for us, we consider to be a big deal and we consider that to be um, an, a, a deal to be celebrated. And we hope that, that you would be loving the job by 90 days and celebrate. Normally by 30 days, 35 days, you kind of know if you're going to be there or you're not. When you get to 90 days, um, we would think that that's a great opportunity. But before you leave any employment, uh, because something is wrong, uh, please let us know. We would love to work with that business. We would love to work with you uh, to see if there's any adjustments that can be made for you to stay on that job. Um, that's one of the um, one of the benefits that you have in being an ARS client is that we can go into some of the businesses and we can have a discussion with them about um, not necessarily your specific uh, disability, uh, but uh, to educate them a little more about disabilities and about accommodations, um, because uh, we do have accommodations uh, for um, pretty much every disability that's out there to help you get to work. So we have a section um, that's under the commerce, another department connected to us, that we will help you with a disability. Just say you are going to work, uh, you decide you're going to work at J.C. Penney's and you're standing all day. You're diabetic, you realize you need a new pair of shoes. Uh, if you had these shoes, you could stand those six hours, seven hours. 
uh, at this time, you can't uh, afford them. Well, that's what we were coming in. We would say, hey, please don't quit your job because you don't have the shoes. Uh, let's get back with your counselor and let's see if there if there's some money allowed to purchase you some shoes. Talk to your counselor. She may be able to purchase those shoes. And guess what? You can stay on that job 90 more days or hopefully a whole year. Uh, you're working a job. Uh, you realize that they're talking and you're not hearing them. They're not talking loud enough. Well, you had a hearing aid, but you no longer have the hearing aid and you just kind of been going to work every day without the hearing aid, hoping that you can manage to do it. It's starting to affect your job. Well, that's a time again, where you connect back with your counselor and let her know, hey, I'm on the job. You know, I, I have a hearing problem, but I, I don't have hearing aids and I'm Right now, I'm fearing to lose my job. Talk to your counselor. That may be another area where she said, hey, let me purchase some hearing aids so that you'll be able to keep your job. Um, we do have a section. We don't always um, go straight to glasses because we do have division of the blind that help with glasses. But if you have not reached that milestone, maybe that's something that you can talk to your counselor again um, about and see if glasses or something of that nature can be purchased for you. Um, you need a job right now, your car is down and we want you to keep your job. You need a bus pass again. That's something you can talk to your counselor. So pretty much any barriers to employment that you have. You, you can talk to your counselor. Uh, you can always talk to me too. Uh, but if it costs money, I'm going to always refer back to the counselor uh, and see if there's something that we can do to keep you employed. Um, I hope that I answered or went through that pretty quickly. I want um, Cap and Cassandra to kind of fill in for anything that I have left out. Okay. Um, I guess I can kind of, I don't know, Cassandra can kind of assist me with our conclusion here. Once again, my name is Mr. Whitley. Um, I am Mrs. Cassandra Adams' assistant. And uh, first first of all, I'd like to actually thank you all for giving us the opportunity to speak here today on this first day of Black History Month. Um, I really wasn't expecting all those uh, extraordinary uh, presentations, and I really do appreciate that. Um, I value and honor our Black history very highly. Um, thank you again. But once again, um, just kind of conclude us here, I would like to also just summarize it. Um, initially, our agency, excuse me, uh, provides funding for individuals to uh, either return to school, um, to basically assist them with their uh, choices and what they want to go to school for, whether it be college, whether it be uh, vocational uh, uh, items such as, you know, trucking school or cosmetology, esthetician, barbering school, um, things of that nature, you know, any type of trade, as long as, you know, they fit within our vendors uh, selection. And uh, this is just initially an, an, uh, an opportunity for these individuals who cannot afford to have it, uh, you know, uh, tuition assisted with them. Um, Cassandra, you want to kind of add anything in there? Just jump in because this is how we normally operate. Now, we, we free fall. I'm going to be honest. I kind of like to have fun with it when we do presentations. I don't want to, you know, bore people because I know some people tend to kind of, you know, lose track. I'm one. So I know I, one thing that I don't think we discussed was that we also can help uh, individuals uh, open up their own business. Correct. You know, we provide uh, financial assistance for that as well. And uh, there's a team at UALR that will help you write your business plan. And then you can turn that into us. And, you know, we we send it to our business. What is Jeff's title? Um, I'm just going to say our, um, our business decision team. Yes. Um, they have a panel of individuals that's beyond us that review your business plan. Yeah. And, you know, make sure that it's deemed qualified for our services. And just to kind of add into that, I can't remember everything, but um, anything under 10,000, I believe it just goes to the counselor and the uh Yes. Uh, the coordinator of that program, anything above 10,000. Goes it, to the committee. The panel. Yeah. Yes. And what I'm referring to when I say 10,000, I mean $10,000. Yeah. 
Okay. So we want, we want uh, definitely, um, when we uh, think of Shorter College, and it's and it's a good thing, but this is the second time we've met with Shorter College this week. We had um, mm -hmm. uh, Rick Watson Rick, early Rick in the Watson. week, and, uh, and yeah. to uh, let him understand how we connect. Um, a lot of times we do have people that are coming out of incarceration. Absolutely. A lot of times if people have been incarcerated, they probably had medication while they were incarcerated. So if they if they bring um, know what medication they were taking uh, while they were incarcerated, incarcerated, they can bring that to us and let us kind of figure out um, if that's the medication that will qualify as a disability. As I said, disability is not always wheelchair blind uh, and deaf there's a lot of things that qualify. It may not qualify you for social security uh, insurance, but it, do, it it will qualify you for Arkansas Rehabilitation yeah. Services. Uh, our main goal is to help you get employed, stay employed. And so we have a lot of resources there. If we can't do it ourselves, we connect with a lot of other agencies and a lot of other business to help with these resources. So don't count us out, give us a call, um, give us a call and let us, uh, some, a lot of those have to be changed. It's pretty old, yes. but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but give us a call and let us right help now. you, uh, and answer any questions that you have pertaining to our services. As you said, we have small business loan, which I think is a great, uh, great, great department for our clients, uh, helping you find employment, interview techniques. Uh, everybody is doing it, but the more people you have on your side, the better your chances are landing the job of your choice, a job that you uh, would love doing for the rest of your life, or even a job that you want to just do until you're able to go into your own business. But, but please give us a call, give us a chance. Uh, one of the other thing, if you can, to learn more about our departments, if you, if you are struggling with a disability and you think that you can't go to work right now, if you have a family member that's struggling with a disability and needing some help, we have an I Can office on 7th Street in Little Rock. Please take a visit in there, take a tour in there and see if there's anything in there. Uh, it's free of charge. Mm -hmm. And see if there's anything in there that you need or that you would like that would help you help a family member or just someone, a neighbor, anybody in the community. As I said, we are the well-kept state secret, but we are definitely uh, willing and able to help you with anything related to disability, finding a job, uh, and small business. Mm -hmm. Mrs. So, Lovett. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Do you mind, uh, I don't know, did, did you complete that, Ms. Claire? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Do you mind allowing opening up the floor or the uh, unmuting opportunity for, for those that may have questions? Because I do, I believe, see, I see Mr. Or oh, Mrs. Atlanta Stevens got the okay. hand up and they didn't allow them to ask questions. Okay. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Payne, Mr. Payne will coordinate that. Okay. He's our IT person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Stevens. Mm -hmm. You have a question. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, yes. uh, as far as um, offering services to students who are in college, uh, I'm a student at Shorter. Um, last, last semester, I had the benefit of working with our Office of Educational Access. Um, that was basically for people like with AAC or different kinds of disabilities like that. Uh, we got a lot of support um, with our coursework and um, solving problems on campus. Uh, we don't have her here anymore, and I'm still working on a replacement, but do you offer any kind of services um, like on campus or at your facility for, uh, for uh, individuals who are currently in college? I'm gonna let Cassandra answer that question. I believe she was asking, do, do we offer any uh, services or uh, assistance for individuals that are already in college? Am I saying it correctly, Ms. Steve? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the hands-on kind of thing. I mean, we offer rehabilitation counseling. So if you're having issues, you know, at school and they don't have a disability services office, then we can certainly, you know, help you out. Are you needing equipment to help you? And we can provide, we can also maybe help with like providing tutors and that sort of thing. And equipment. 
and yes. equipment, definitely equipment. Um, you might want to elaborate just a little bit on that, Cassandra, about the equipment provided. I know Josh typically is the one that has all that information, <laughs> Mr. Goosby. Let me ask Ms. Uh, Ms. Stevens, what type of equipment or what type of assistant are you needing? Ms. Stevens? I've got her muted. Mm -hmm. What type of equipment or assistant are you needing at this time? You still muted? There we go. Okay, I'm a, I'm unmuted now. And um, thanks again for you guys being here. I would say for me, what I feel like I'm lacking is um, public organization, um, the disability, uh, I'm sorry, the Office of Educational Access used to provide like um, the book in a PDF form if I ask for it, so I don't have to go online. Um, sometimes I can't get online, but mostly it was just the coaching, the encouragement, and someone helping me stay on task. And if I had a problem, someone who could communicate with the campus on my behalf. Yes, we can do that. Not, I mean, the book part, I don't know about that because that's something that we wouldn't have access to, but we can certainly provide the, you know, the coaching and the encouragement, uh, that sort of thing. Well, I look forward to contacting your office this week. Thank okay. you. I saw another hand. Yeah, I, did. I think it was Stephanie. If you're unable to uh, unmute yourself, Stephanie, Stephanie did not have a microphone attached. So um, she has to either put some in the chat or connect the microphone. Okay, let me go to the chat. Okay, while we're waiting on her, is there any other questions while she uh, gather her question? I could go over one other thing that I do that is not job related, and that is. Uh, independent living services. It's, it's usually for the elderly to keep them living in their own homes. Uh, we provide hearing aids, uh, wheelchair ramp on the house, shower chair, you know, we can do other home modifications. Like, you know, if you need your bathroom redesigned, you know, redone so you can uh, get a handrail or that sort of thing, you know, to, anything that makes it easier for you to remain living in your own home rather than having to, you know, go to a nursing facility. And, and we, and we are up to date on technology. So we uh, do offer cell phones, iPads, um, you know, to help with that. So uh, as we said, if you can think of it, if it's something that you need, it's going to help you with your disability. We are the people to call. And I would love for uh, to take uh, you on a tour over at ICANN. It's not really, really big, but you also can go online and find, uh, and they, I think they're now showing what they have uh, in the office, um, but it's, it's great. I like to go because I like to see them actually show me how it works. I'm so visual. I like to see how it works. So seeing it online is one thing, but to actually go in there and let them show you how something works is, is amazing. Uh, I think they had a robot there that took notes in class and I thought, okay. Um, not that the robot would be yours, it would probably still be ours, but um, just the fact that they had all this technology uh, to help someone with a disability. So if a disability is out there, they have thought about it and they have created something to help you with it. And again, um, mostly of what we do is for people that are looking for employment, but we do have, uh, we do have things for people that are not looking for employment. I think I saw a chat, something on the chat. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. If you don't have any other questions, we'll turn it back over to you, Mrs. Lovett. All right, thank you. I and thank again, you thank you all for inviting us. Um, mm -hmm. 
please contact us for any um, questions that you have. Um, we plan to make you all's office one of our stops. I would say monthly, but I can't guarantee that, but we would love to make you all one of our stops where we can continue to come by and um, you know, update you all, give you all information to help you understand what we're doing and to definitely direct anybody needing our services our way. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so very much. This has been great. Uh, you all, have, I've got a full page of notes here that I'm sure I'm going to be able to share with some of our students. As I was taking notes, I would have students in mind. So certainly we uh, thank you for sharing. And I've learned things about uh, rehab, especially the um, 16 to 99 part. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, you all have um, been a blessing to Shorter College today. And we look forward to connecting with you all and continuing to, um, to have you all to support us. So thank you very much. All right, at this time uh, is Dr. Foreman, is Dr. Foreman, he, is he online with us today? Our Associate Dean of Student Affairs. He is All not. Right. He is not. Okay, then we're going to go straight on into our alma mater and uh, then we'll have our benediction. that you would please take the opportunity to scan the code and evaluate our chapel. And we look forward to uh, hearing and seeing your comments going forward. And now our benediction. Lord, we thank you for the time that we have had together. We thank you for the knowledge that has been imparted. And now, oh God, we ask that you would bless those who shared, bless those who served. I ask that you would bless us and keep us all safe as we go through this inclement weather and help us to allow us to continue on doing your will and walking in your way. In this we ask in Jesus' name, amen.